to say that you did not recognize what had been done, to ignore what must have been the excruciating sounds that came from that child on a daily basis, is more than disconcerting to this court. And as such, the court finds it appropriate that each be sentenced to the State Department of Corrections for a period of life. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Nike TV. Thank you so much for tuning in today. There is a trigger warning that should be placed on this case as it involves the death of a child. So if that's something that you're not interested in hearing about or you feel like it's just too heavy for you, feel free to click out of this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Self-care is definitely the best care. So I completely understand. The intention behind this video was not to disrespect anyone. I did find some rather graphic photos and images while doing my research into this case. So if any family or friends should happen upon this video, understand that my intention was just to shed light on this case, to educate people about the horrors of what Serenity had gone through on that day. With that being said, let's get into this devastating case. Today's Death on a Dirt Road feature is all about Erica Butts and her co-defendant, Shanita Cunningham. On November 4th, 2009, three-year-old Serenity Richardson was entrusted to the care of her godmother, 23-year-old Erica Butts, and her 23-year-old girlfriend, Shanita Cunningham, when the unthinkable happened. Serenity's mother was back in Detroit. She was moving at the time and had allowed Serenity to come to South Carolina to spend some time with her godmother while she did so. Aisha Richardson had left Serenity in Erica Butts' care for several weeks while she moved and had fully intended on coming back to a live child after that was over. But on November 4th, 2009, at around 7 p.m., Erica Butts' mother dialed 911 and told them that the child was not breathing. Somerville, South Carolina firefighters arrived shortly after to find the child in full cardiac arrest. An unidentified woman in the home said that Serenity had fallen backwards in a chair and had struck her head, which was the reason for her being lifeless at the time. EMS rushed Serenity to Somerville Medical Center where she was pronounced dead at 8.05 p.m. So what could have caused an otherwise healthy toddler to go into full cardiac arrest and to be pronounced dead? For starters, doctors and nurses at the medical center saw cuts and bruises on Serenity's legs, abdomen, feet, chest, and back. There was a golf ball sized bruise on her head as well as a burn mark on her right leg. An autopsy performed by a forensic pathologist at the Medical University of South Carolina determined that the cause of death had been full body blunt force trauma. Erica Butts then changed the story and stated that she had whipped serenity and that she had hit her head several times. Erica Butts was later arrested and charged with homicide by child abuse. Shanita Cunningham joined her shortly after and was charged with the same. They were both held in the Charleston County Jail pending a bond hearing. Bond was subsequently denied for the both of them. More information was gathered after the arrest. Erica Butts told authorities that she had whipped the child several times after she had urinated on the floor. She also stated that Serenity had hit her head multiple times while falling in the bathroom and 30 minutes after the last fall is when the child's breathing became shallow. Listen, my nephew is three years old right now at this very moment. They're going to have accidents. They're going to make a mess. They're going to do a lot of things that you do not like, but that is the nature of the beast. When you have children, toddlers in particular, they are extremely messy. They don't have control of their bowels and their bladder like an older child. And even then it's taking a risk. I mean, that was no reason to beat and whip a child to death, but I'm getting off on a tangent and you know, I, I just don't, Neither Erica nor Shanita called 911. Instead, they called Erica's mother, LaDawn Butts, who then came to the home, assessed the child, and decided to call 911. Investigators were able to prove that Shanita Cunningham was also at the home at the time of the incident and that she had participated in the child abuse by hitting Serenity with a belt. Once she realized that the child was unconscious, it was Cunningham who put the child on ice in an attempt to shock her. When that didn't work, she also put bleach under Serenity's nose in an attempt to wake her up neither worked. In a last ditch effort to put some distance between herself and the crime, Shanita Cunningham then left the state to avoid being arrested. To add insult to injury, Erica Butts was Aisha Richardson, Serenity's mother. She was her best friend. 
and she had entrusted her daughter into the care of her godmother thinking that she would be safe and sound. The bond hearing was the first time that Aisha Richardson was able to publicly deal with the death of her child which she should not have had to but we know how the media can be so the post and courier was able to speak with her and she stated that she hoped to be able to attend the hearing for the two and as a result she was able to they did not appear in front of her instead it was held on closed circuit television with Erica Butts appearing on a monitor from across the street Aisha had several friends and relatives rallying around her during the hearing with their arms around her for support appearing on Erica's behalf was her mother and sister in addition to her lawyer when judge Lombard began reading off the charges Richardson's knees buckled and she burst into tears after hearing the word homicide who could blame her Erica's lawyer began to defend her stating that this was her first offense she had a clean record other than this i always wonder why attorneys use that in a court when there is a crime such as murder to be grappling with i mean what does a clean record have to do with the fact that someone's life was taken a three-year-old child at that i mean i just never understood that regardless this was aisha richardson's only child she lost her only child that day and when Erica Butts saw what was going on, she began yelling, I'm sorry, Aisha. I'm so sorry. Sorry wouldn't change anything because Serenity didn't suffer abuse at the hands of strangers. She suffered abuse at the hands of her godmother and her godmother's girlfriend who were there, who were supposed to be protecting her at all costs, which is the reason why she was sent there in the first place. She's an extension of the child's parent. And she failed her in the worst way possible. This was such a tragic case. And after doing some digging, I found Serenity's mother's Facebook page. The Facebook page is indeed named after Serenity. You can tell that she just misses her child so much. And as it turned out, the judge in the case definitely agreed with all of those assertions. And both Shanita and Erica were charged with life in prison without the possibility of parole for the homicide by child abuse of little Serenity Richardson. And there is a video that is floating around YouTube that shows their reaction once the judge pronounced that sentence. And if you watch from the beginning, you saw where I played that small clip first. And that is the judge going over her thoughts about the case and how she felt about everything that had taken place. And I stopped it right at the point where their reaction would have come. But you do hear her pronouncing them with life in prison without the possibility of parole. And here is the rest of that clip. And to say that you did not recognize what had been done to ignore what must have been the excruciating sounds that came from that child on a daily basis is more than disconcerting to this court. And as such, the court finds it appropriate that each be sentenced to the State Department of Corrections for a period of life. You will get credit for any of the time that you've
Aisha Richardson did ask for the maximum penalty in this case. Erica entered an Alford plea, meaning that she knew that her case would likely result in a conviction. So she did not admit to innocence or guilt, just the fact that there was enough to find her guilty. During her hearing, Shanita Cunningham's attorney stated that his client is less culpable than Erica Butts in this case. She was also abused as a child and stated that she did not know the child's injuries would be life-threatening. Hers weren't. I find that to be the sickest and most trash explanation that I've ever heard. Regardless, both were definitely charged with homicide by child abuse and convicted. They both are now serving life in prison. Erica at Camille Griffin Graham Correctional Institution and Shanita at Leith Correctional Institution. They do have a separation, which means that they cannot be in the same place at the same time. Woo! That was a hard one to get through. But what were my thoughts on Erica Butts? Erica Butts honestly had become like a little sister to me. Her attorney described her as meek and I could not agree more. You don't hear a lot from her. She is very contemplative about what she has done. She often vocalizes it. It is very difficult for her to speak about it, but she will speak about it. Again, I worked in classification before I resigned from the Department of Corrections. And as such, I was in charge of facilitating legal phone calls. And I heard Erica Butts on the phone with her lawyer at a particular time. Me and my team were in the office at the time and they were stating that her appeal was basically denied she stated that she did not kill little serenity that it was Shanita and she just really basically covered up for Shanita she never said anything she just went on with it since that was her girlfriend and that was her goddaughter and nobody believed it anyway but she wanted to tell the truth on that front she had gone back to court and tried to get off or get her sentence reduced and it was subsequently denied. I watched her break down in tears. My team and I had to comfort her in the best way that we knew how. I mean, it was devastating to watch. Not as devastating, I'm sure, as the events that I just described, but just knowing that if that is true, if she definitely did not have a part in it other than the fact that she aided and abetted her girlfriend and that she did not call 911, then it's just really devastating. I mean, I can't really speak on what I believe, whether or not both of them deserve exactly what they they got. I mean, I'm not judge, jury, or executioner. I'm not here to play that. But I will say that there have been some doubts in my mind in recent years. And, you know, I used to um, allow her to speak on the phone to my mom sometimes, you know, just to be encouraged. You know, whenever she was in my office, my mom would offer her encouragement. She received some letters. I mean, just different things you know and I couldn't do much because I was an employee of the state at the time but outreach was definitely in my heart you know again I like to treat people like human beings and Erica is one of them she is very childlike she is very meek and humble you know she doesn't give you much of an issue now she she can turn up with that attitude she's a Capricorn nonetheless okay and we we sometimes we can turn up with that attitude so I've seen her in action I've seen her back and forth and lock up in recent years just because she is dealing with so much I guess as far as the case is concerned once again I don't mean any disrespect in giving this assessment of Erica Butts because I cannot imagine what Aisha Richardson and the rest of her family have gone through so I'm not taken down from any of that I'm just letting you know that that's not the Erica that I met you know when I met her she was already into her sentence I came back in 2012 I believe and she was locked up shortly before that so she hadn't even big be, uh began that life sentence that long ago when I came I never met Shanita never cared to meet her there's just something about her that does not strike me in the right way again i'm not here to play judge jury and executioner there's just a certain vibe that i get from her but i have been around i've worked buildings and i've heard erica on the phone with shanita's daughter i believe she has an older daughter that erica still speaks to i'm not sure if those two communicate you know there are ways and then there are ways prisoners learn how to stay in contact with each other although they are in two separate prisons and those two again they have a separation so really they're not supposed to be in the same place at the same time but i am sure that messages are passed or however you want to do it you know that's just that's the nature of the beast that's how prison works but as far as erica is concerned you know i really just pray that she gets herself together i pray that she finds peace in the midst of this storm you know i again i cannot imagine what serenity's mother has gone through in the wake of this this oh so tragic event you know and i i'm very sure that she's had to learn how to move on how to go on with her life but 
you know, Erica is doing the same. I, I will say that, you know, with those appeals being denied, she is very young to be in prison for the rest of her life. She came at 23, which that's not the youngest that I've seen them come to prison and have a life sentence, but it's, it's still young. Nonetheless, you understand what I'm saying? Like, I just, I find it very unfortunate that things had to go down the way that they did. And I'm sure that this was not Serenity's first time being with her godmother. I'm sure that she has spent time with her before this and, and this was not the outcome. But as it turns out, you know, this time Erica was with someone who, again, who self-admittedly was abused as a child. So maybe she just thought that that was the norm. It was done to her. She came out of it pretty much unscathed. But she was not mentally unscathed because if you can beat a child and put them on ice and state that you're trying to shock their body, something is wrong with that. I'm Editing night here. Black people, please stop beating and spanking these children because they have an accident when they are toddlers. Enough is enough. I mean, come on. I mean, have you never heard of hypothermia, ma'am? That kills as well. How... Uh, you just you just don't know everything that went down i was not there there was nobody there but that unknown individual shanita erica and serenity so oh and and god you know god saw what was going on and maybe that was just his plan all along i don't know i am not one to speculate on things like that but as far as erica is concerned again i hope she finds peace in the midst of this storm uh she's been acting out when I left because again she got denied for this appeal so I guess her response to that was to start acting out and to start using illicit substances I don't want to go too deep into that and, and put all her business out on front street but I will say that you know I've seen her transform before my very eyes the meek and humble Erica had really all but disappeared while I was still in the Department of Corrections now I left back in January of 2021 so that was the last time that was the last time I really saw her face to face before I went down to the men's institution. So I can't tell you how she is now other than speaking with friends. And I have not bothered to ask because, you know, those are not my memories. Those are their assessments. So I just want to give you guys straight from the horse's mouth from what I experienced, you know, of her on my own. But, you know, she has really burrowed her way into some people's hearts you know some of my family members included nobody condones what she did nobody is okay with what she did but you know we all fall short of the glory of god we all do things that are adverse that we wish that we could take back nothing quite so you know so permanent but that's just the way the cookie crumbled you know Again, I wish her peace. I wish her family peace. Definitely wish Aisha Richardson and her family peace. And I'm just going to go ahead and end this episode of Death on a Dirt Road here. Again, this was a particularly rough one to speak about. I had always known about this case. I had delved into this case while I was still at the prison because I used to like to go through and see what I was working with and who I was working with. But I never got into it the way that I got into it today in order to bring these facts to you all. It was devastating to read you know I have not felt like this since I did the case of Courtney Thompson and Robert Ginyard senior that you know something just hit me like a ton of bricks the way that it did maybe it's the fact that I have nieces and nephews around these children's ages and I just I could not imagine and thank God you know I do not have to imagine and I just I'm praying for everybody involved everybody who has had some hand in this case whether it was the perpetrators or the victims i'm praying and that's just that on that so thank you for tuning in tonight tv i'll see you guys in the next one oh, I hear the